Awesome, we'll just go ahead and get started. If you're just joining us now, uh, welcome in everyone. Um, I definitely just wanna start off by giving you an overview of our time together and what, the, what that is gonna look like. Um, so in a second, I'll begin by introducing myself and then I'll also give you a little bit more information about BC and about our goal for this webinar. After that, I'll have our panelists introduce themselves and that'll take us right to the Q&A portion of the webinar, which is really what we're here for today. Um, so I do just want to point that out. You have a Q&A function on the toolbar at the bottom of your screen, um, and that is going to be open the entire time. So feel free to utilize that, ask any and all questions, and we'll try to get to as many of them as possible. You can start sending them in now or um, once our panelists introduce themselves, really up to you. On top of that, the session will be recorded and the recording will eventually be available on our website at BC Admissions. Um, so I'll definitely remind you of all that. But in case you have to step away for a second, you can definitely come back and watch this recording. So I, again, like I said, I'm going to introduce myself. Um, my name is Jen Lozano. I am currently a junior, originally from Orlando, Florida. And I'm studying Applied Psychology and Human Development in the Lynch School of Education and Human Development, and I have a double major in Political Science in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. Um, I'm facilitating this panel. I've also facilitated a couple other panels uh, in my role as an AHANA Outreach Coordinator in the Student Admissions Program. So that's one of the organizations we have. Uh, we volunteer to host these virtual panels. We also do tours and info sessions on campus as well, as well as a couple other things. Um, but I mentioned the term AHANA, so for those of you that may not know, AHANA is a term that we use here at BC for students that identify as African American, Hispanic, Asian, Native American plus. Um, so that's just to give you a little bit of context. And I do want to recognize that we are doing this online, of course. Um, so the past year and a half, almost two years now, it's definitely been challenging, but it's also allowed us to utilize Zoom to bring BC to you all. And that's what we really wanna do here um, is bring these concepts about campus resources, involvement and community to you all and answer those questions. Uh, before we get into that though, just wanna tell you a little bit more about BC in case you really haven't heard about it much or read about it much in general. Um, so Boston College, is located in Justin Hill, Massachusetts. It's just six miles outside of the city of Boston, which is amazing because you have access to use the city for its various resources as well. Um, but you also have that college campus in a relatively suburban area. Um, and from the top of campus to the bottom of campus, I'd say it only takes about 20 minutes. So it really helps to build that sense of community. And BC has just about 9,400 undergraduate students. So that makes us a medium-sized school. Again, there's so many perks to that because you can have those large uh, spirited events, whether that's like football, any sporting events, big performing arts events, um, community-wide events, things like that. But you also have those smaller class sizes um, with an average of about 27 students, and you're able to make those one-on-one -on -one connections with other students, faculty, and staff, things like that. Um, in terms of academics, our students are spread across four main academic divisions. The first one is the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. That is our largest um, division. It houses about two thirds of students. Uh, that has all of your humanities, your sciences, things like that. We have over uh, 30 majors and 19 inter interdisciplinary minors within that school. The next largest school is the Carroll School of Management. And students in here major in management and then they have a concentration in one of 13 options and sometimes they double concentrate. Then you have the Lynch School of Education and Human Development. Um, I mentioned one of the majors in there is mine, Applied Psychology. You also have Elementary Education, Secondary Education, a new one that we have called Transformative Educational Studies, um, and then Applied Psych. And within the Lynch School, you have an opportunity to do a practicum during your junior or senior year. So getting you to have this kind of hands-on experience. So for example, if you're in elementary ed or secondary ed, you get to actually go help teach at one of our local schools in the greater Boston area. Then we have the Canal School of Nursing. Uh, we have 100, about 100 students in each class. Um, and the really cool thing with the Canal School of Nursing is that you actually start clinical rotations during your sophomore year. So again, hands-on experience. Um, because we are located where we are, we are connected to just over 85 healthcare facilities, including major teaching hospitals like Boston Children's, Massachusetts General, and so many others. Um, all four of those divisions are tied together by a core curriculum that we have here at BC, and that's spread across 
uh, 10 academic disciplines. It's just 15 credits. If you have any more specific questions on that, feel free to ask um, and we can get to those as well. One last piece I do just want to briefly touch on um, in terms of what Boston College is. It's a private Jesuit Catholic institution. Um, so I did not know what a Jesuit institution meant, um, but for me, I'd say that this Jesuit identity is really tied into the social and academic life here at BC. Um, it's seen through so many different things, whether it's through conversations that you have, individual reflections, mentorship opportunities, uh, retreats, and service. And I'm sure we'll definitely uh, get to that in some of our questions today. But like I said a little bit earlier, we are focusing on the Ahana student experience, um, and especially on campus resources, involvement, and community. So to get to that, I definitely want to start off by introducing our panelists. Um, so if each of you, starting with uh, Sebastian, could just introduce yourself, where you're from, what you're studying, and then if you could tell me what your most meaningful club or organization involvement or any other type of involvement on or on campus is. Hello, my name is Sebastian Cota. I'm currently a sophomore at Boston College pursuing an independent major in global public health. And I'm originally from Los Angeles, California. And uh, one of my most meaningful experiences uh, on campus is uh, SHOFA, which is, stands for STEM and Health Outreach for HANA. And that is a group that focuses on supporting first generation and HANA students pursuing pre-house or STEM, STEM careers. And so I really like it because we get the opportunity to support students like us and help us uh, move forward especially when a lot of us are, are, are we're like under a business group in STEM. So it's very meaningful to help each other uh, go wherever you want to go with your dreams. And so I do a lot of work with that, with helping students get internships, uh, how to prepare a resume, get ready for interviews, and just a lot of resources like networking with, with uh, the professors on campus. So I really enjoy my activities with SHOFA. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Mo. Uh, I'm a junior in the Carroll School of Management, studying finance and managing for social impact with a minor in international studies. And I'm originally from Princeton, New Jersey. And I'd say my most meaningful involvement here on campus is with an organization called FACES. So FACES is our campus's student-run anti-racism organization. And not only is it a community of people that's dedicated to doing really good and really important work, uh, but you also have a like a safe community and family of people uh, that are not only, you know, other Ahana students that are committed to anti-racism, but also white allies who uh, clearly have a deep sense of care for not only what's going on in the world, but also uh, across our campus. Hi, everyone. My name is Gianna. Um, I'm a senior in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, and I'm double majoring in political science and history. I'm originally from Miami, Florida. And um, I would say a meaningful um, involvement for me on campus has to be student government. Um, student government here is UGBC, so Undergraduate Government at Boston College. And through this, I've been able to work and collaborate with amazing student advocates on campus and just really making sure that we can advocate for students and make a really inclusive community um, at BC. And um, we have three diversity and inclusion councils which do amazing work in making sure that this gets accomplished as well um and yeah i can definitely talk more about that throughout the panel but this has really been such a great place where i can meet really passionate students but also do really important work thanks gianna hi everyone my name is yash i'm originally from mumbai india and i'm a junior in the carroll school of Ma carroll school of management concentrating in economics and finance i'm also pursuing a history minor in the morrissey college of arts and sciences and i'd say that my most meaningful involvement here at bc is with bc bigs and we volunteer for big brothers big sisters of eastern massachusetts uh service is a big part of the culture here at bc it's not a requirement but i think 80 to 90 percent of students here at bc voluntarily choose to get involved with service so that's something that inspired me when i came to uh, came to bc i'm sure a lot of you are also involved in service and at the high school level as well so that's something you're passionate about and when you continue that's a great opportunity that here at bc as well because there's so many ways you can involve with it for me personally it was a great opportunity for me to provide some mentorship some advice to someone who hasn't had the same privileges and the same support system that i had growing up as well and have an impact on the community that i have that i'm a part of during my four years here at bc as well Awesome. Thank you, everyone. I just want to remind you all, like as the viewers, that the 
feel free to start putting in your questions into the Q&A. Um, we want to answer as many questions as possible, but I'll actually get us started. Um, so we have over 300 clubs and organizations here at BC and you all touch on, touched on different involvements. Um, how easy or difficult did you find it to become involved at BC? Like, how did you find out about these? Um, did you just like fall upon it? Um, anything like that? Um, I can start us off. I think uh, finding out about organizations is one of the easiest things to do here as long as you attend our student involvement fair. And that's something that happens usually around the first week of classes where they set up uh, a bunch of tables on uh, Stokes Lawn, which is this big patch of greenery uh, on our campus. And you have over 300 student organizations lined up, snaked around this lawn, and they're uh, yelling at you, giving you free stuff, trying to get you to sign up for their clubs. And uh, a lot of the organizations here do take just general members where you sign up, you get put on an email list, and whenever they have events or meetings, you go. Uh, and some of the other ones are application based. The one that I mentioned, for example, which is FACES, is an application based organization. And usually uh, the application process is a club asking you why you want to join, what you think you can bring to the organization, why it matters to you. And then sometimes that also follows up with an interview, and then you find out whether or not you are a member. Yeah, I would say, um, like Mo, it's pretty um, easy here to get involved just because the community is such a great place that like pushes you to get involved. I would say clubs and organizations are a huge part of student life here um, and they make up a large amount of like what your friend group might look like just because you know for sure that you all have at least one thing in common that you're passionate about. So it's a great way to make friends. Um, and yeah, I would definitely say going to the involvement fair is huge. Um, and also, like, if you're the type of student that, like, waits it out, like, I'll wait out for a semester and see how everything else goes, that's totally okay, too. There's more opportunities down the line to get involved. Um, and you can also feel it out. So if you have a friend that is really involved in something that you, you know, find passion in through hearing them talk about it, then, like, that's great, too. And you can join second semester, sophomore year, really any year uh, you can start. So once you get involved in these uh, organizations or clubs, did you find it kind of difficult to navigate your way within the club? Or did you find it was easy to find like upperclassmen mentors or do you have any help like figuring stuff out, anything like that? Uh, for me, uh, I feel like it mostly depends on on you, like if you're willing to reach out and ask questions. Um, because I know, for example, for me in in Shofo, when I just joined, um, I I was a first year, so I didn't know that much. But I made sure to start asking asking questions to these students who were already junior seniors and already took some of these classes. So I said like, hey, what do you recommend for me to take, or what should I be aware of? And just small conversations like that can really help me out so much, even with just like choosing classes, but also general advice for how to go along with your journey and things like that. So uh, it's very easy to just start reaching out. Uh, you can just say, ask somebody a question or you, you can even reach out to like other people, uh, even your friends. So I feel like it'll be very easy. Yeah, I'd say like finding mentorship opportunities at Echo and Sebastian said that you can find them anywhere here on campus and clubs are a great way to do it because clubs have people from uh, all across the grade years. And I think seniors and juniors, especially some of the best mentors on campus because they're students just like you. So they're, they were in your shoes maybe just a year or two years ago and they really know more personally at a deeper level exactly what you're going through as well. So maybe you're struggling with the class or you just need some advice or you're just you know trying to figure out life at BC in general. They're the best people to ask because they've had those same questions, they've had those same anxieties, they've been through that journey as well. So those are great people to reach out to. I definitely echo what Sebastian said. And like you all were mentioning, you're involved in different clubs. Um, a lot of students at BC tend to be involved in a lot of different things, whether that's on campus or on campus. Um, I'd be interested to know, especially in your freshman year, did you find it difficult to manage your schedule, like with classes, with extracurriculars, with any other um, work or anything like that? Yeah, I can touch on that a bit. So um, a main part of college that was really surprising to me was you have an unlimited amount of time around your classes and you have full control over your schedule, um, you know, depending on what classes you want and how, how many sections they offer of the class. But basically, um, 
it was kind of it was kind of difficult for me in that sense because I had all this time. It was almost too much freedom for me at the beginning. So I would definitely recommend um, you know actually being intentional with your schedule, um, tuning in if you're a morning person, you know afternoon person for classes and when you work best because that really helped me out. Um, once I got a hold of my schedule and how I liked to study and when I like to study, um, it was great to balance out my academics with my extracurriculars. So um, I would say. It was a rough transition at the beginning, but I think once I got the hang of it and tuned into myself and what type of learner I am, um, I was able to balance the two really well. And would you say besides like on campus experiences and involvements, are there ways to become involved like with the city of Boston or with other schools around Boston or just kind of outside of the BC campus and community? Yeah, I think there's so many ways to get involved with not only the Boston community, but also uh, other schools in the greater Boston area. Uh, when I think about ways to get involved with the city of Boston in the classroom, which I've always found to be super fascinating and interesting, something I haven't personally been involved in, but I hear about a lot is the Pulse class. And uh, that's a core class that fills your philosophy and theology core requirements here. So it's a good way to uh, knock out one of the requirements that you have by being a student here at BC. And with the in-class discussions on philosophy and theology, you also have a 12 hour a week commitment to service in the Boston area. And there's so many ways that you can get involved with local schools, hospitals. Uh, I actually know somebody who worked at the suicide hotline as part of their service commitment. Uh, you can also do this through other organizations. I know for Boston is one student club that's really big on service uh, in the Boston area. Uh, sometimes you also do that as part of the Lynch School of Education, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and also a lot of connections with schools in the greater Boston area. I mean, one thing that I can think of was my freshman year, our campus activities board brought a bunch of African dance teams uh, from BU, from Northeastern, so from other schools in the area, all to have a dance competition here at uh, one of the buildings that our campus owns. And that was super interesting and super fun uh, and a great way to connect with other schools. Um, I think it's definitely a lot of opportunities to get involved in Boston. I guess I'll speak a little bit more related to like pre-health and pre-med. So for example, last year I was able to attend the Harvard Medical School and, and Power Conference for uh, underrepresented groups in, in medicine. So that was like one really good opportunity. I'm currently doing an internship at Boston Children's Hospital. So that's an opportunity I was able to apply for. So on Fridays after my morning classes, I take the T to Boston Children's Hospital, which is like 20 minutes away. So that's just one opportunity. Um, even just being in Boston, that's just a, a very good place for a lot of well, some of the best hospitals in the country. And there's a lot of different internships and volunteer opportunities that you can apply for. Uh, it just takes a little bit of investigation and looking up on the websites and you send in the application and hopefully it goes well. So there's definitely a lot of opportunities. And even with graduate schools uh, in Boston, uh, like this could be a lot of conferences, even like if you want to ask questions, things like that, visits. So there's so many ways to get involved with Boston. Awesome. Um, so we've talked a, a good amount on involvement. We can definitely go back to that if there's any more questions on specific clubs or things like that. But I'd like to turn a little bit towards community on campus. So if each of you could go around and how would you describe the campus community here at BC in a word or a phrase and why? Uh, I think family is a really good one. And I think I use that a lot when I talk to people who are asking questions about BC or thinking about applying. And it's because when I talk to friends at other schools about the experience that I have with students at BC, what I hear from upperclassmen, well, when I was a freshman or sophomore, um, it seems like a very, very unique environment. I mean, for one, uh, we have a school where for some reason, even though almost half of our students live off campus junior year, we have over 90 to 95% of seniors living on campus for their final year. Uh, because when you go through your first three years here uh, with students in your class, like everyone wants to be close together to end it, like, to, you know, to, to end the four years, everyone wants to uh, sort of, you know, be together like this big happy family. And it's something that you feel very immediately when you get here on campus. Uh, and I think that's also shown through, uh, I was trying to think of the example of like where, oh, 
when I talk to seniors about whether or not they know somebody, it's always like a one degree of separation from somebody by the time you become a senior here. And that is just super crazy because obviously it's not always like that at other schools. So I think family is a really big one. Uh, everyone's super like well connected with one another and it, it really shows throughout your four years here. That's gonna make me shed a tear over here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I can definitely attest to that as a senior. Um, I'm going through all of that currently and I'm also living on campus. So um, definitely all true. I would say, um, I would say like intentional. I know that that's like a, a kind of not, I don't know, normally used word to define a community of people, but I found that um, my time here, like, yes, we all are like family and I find that this community is like very loving and embraces you, but I find that a lot of it, um, which for me differentiates it from other experiences that I've heard from different schools or other communities is just the intentionality behind it. So like, in my experience, BC students are so intentional with the way that they approach you. Like saying hi on the quad is just something that's like an intentional act of like, hey, I see you like amongst all these people or I'm saying hi to you. Like, it's just very intentional. And I think that, that really makes um, my heart warm and makes my day always like the amount of kind, kind acts that I've seen throughout the day that are so intentional, just have a way of making me feel like warm and loved on a campus with so many people. So I would say intentional. Yeah, I'd say I think both Mo and Gianna had like excellent points and that's exactly what I wanted to say, but they went before me. So to think of something new while they were speaking, uh, I think for me, one thing I've come to find is that people are always willing to learn and that comes off in like many different ways, especially like sometimes being an international student and a HANA student, you can get might be asked like, ignorant questions. But for me, those questions have never come from a place of uh, of malice or like a place of hatred. They've always come from a place of like, they just didn't know about my experiences, what made me unique, but they were always from a place of wanting to learn. And I'm more than happy to have those conversations with people. And I'm just glad that people are one able to acknowledge the fact that they might be ignorant about stuff, but they're willing to learn from that as well and ask me questions. And I think that's something that I can, at least makes me a lot, feel a lot more safer and a lot happier to be on, it, on this campus as well. Um, for me, um, I, I would also like to use the word family because it, it really felt like that. Um, even last year during COVID, um, like the people on my floor, we really got along very well. And just coming back to that after classes is a, re a really nice place because we all like have fun. We go to the dining hall together and that was like a really nice experience. Even now where I'm living, I'm on the multicultural floor uh, for sophomores and that's a really nice space as well. Um, so we're all we're all from like many different backgrounds, even like different music, different food, and we can all come together and have fun and enjoy that and even learn from each other. I think like two weeks ago we had an event called Dance on My Block, and we kind of just learned about like different dances from the different uh, dance groups on campus. So there was like some some dances from like Haiti, uh, the Mexican Association of Students, and just like a very diverse uh, area of that, and it was a really nice experience. And you know, being with your friends that, that you see, is, it really feels like family. So I really enjoyed that. Awesome, thank you. Um, and it's always hard to think of like a different word when you're like, that's the one. Um, but I'd love to know, was it something you were nervous about coming into college, especially coming into your freshman year? Were you nervous about making friends? And then how did that like come to be? Did you make friends? Was it easy? Was it really hard? Uh, where did you find like your people? Yeah, I'd say like uh, definitely like the biggest question about coming to college is what your social life is going to be like and whether you're going to find your community or your family here on campus. Like I, at least for me, I wasn't too scared about the academic side. Was, for me, it was more like the social side of stuff. Uh, but I really came to find that you can find your family in many different facets. Like clubs are a great way for me personally. My freshman year, it was my residence hall. Uh, I became really close friends with my roommates, the people on my floor, the people on the floor just above me as well. And we became like, we used to always hang out after classes. Like we had our classes done by the evening. So in the evening, all, we're all sit in one room, do our homework together, then go to the dining hall, get dinner together, come back, maybe watch a movie or just hang out and spend some time together before going to bed and doing the same thing in the next day for me. I found my family in my residence hall. Like one of my roommates, a freshman year, he was my roommate last year. I'm also living with him again next year. And I'm still pretty close with the people I got to know in my residence hall. Um, for me, um, it was kind of like, uh, I guess, 
I don't know if scary is the right word, but just like a whole new experience because I came from across the country and I still remember the first day I came to campus, I was with my mom and I was just wondering, like, I don't know anybody here, like nobody from a high school that I know. And, but um, in those first two weeks, everybody's in the same boat, trying to meet new people. Uh, and like, they're really going to be like, hey, uh, what's your name? And like, hear about you, things like that. So I just kind of went along with that. And, you know, people say, hey, let's go to the lounge, stuff like that. They're watching football games in there, playing games. And that's like a nice way to start meeting people. And eventually you, you just kind of click and then you kind of start to meet people. Like you're not, you don't have to find like your best friend, like the first semester of college. Like that's not really going to happen. If it does happen, you know, that's good. But it takes time to start meeting people uh, and hear from others. And, and that's like a really nice experience. And so that's kind of how it went for me. Also in like the groups, uh, the groups I was part of for like the learning to learn office, which is for first generation students. Uh, a lot of us were like in the same programs. Um, so I met them through there. Um, also in, in a, I'm in the gateway program. So that's for uh, students who are pre-health and underrepresented backgrounds. And so a lot of us were in the same classes. And so that's how I started meeting people. So there's many different ways, but definitely those first two weeks of school um, definitely get out of your comfort zone and try to speak to others. And that's a nice way to start meeting people. Absolutely. Um, just as we're talking about like family and the community as well, there's definitely so many people you're meeting, right? Um, I'd love it if maybe two of you could talk about one of your favorite people on campus or one of your like favorite mentors or professors or whoever you want to mention um, and like why they're so important to the community that you're building here. Yeah, I'm going to jump on this one immediately. Um, uh, my freshman year, I took a class called Courage to Know. And this is a, it's a class that explores a lot of uh, global and national issues and then applies them into the context of being a college student. Uh, you start navigating uh, what's important to you and the core of the class is figuring out how you can best lead a life of purpose and a life of meaning. And my professor for that, her name is Biz Brocker, and she was a fantastic professor, but also an amazing mentor. And she still is even two years, you know, two years removed from her class. We still talk pretty regularly. Uh, she's been a huge resource for helping me navigate uh, the campus, navigate opportunities on campus, but also figure out uh, both through her classroom and through discussions outside of the classroom, what it is that really matters to me, what I value and how I want to apply that to my life at college and after college. So um, I think it really just speaks to the type of faculty that the school brings in. I think it's one of the biggest assets that the school has. Um, the professors are fantastic. Not only are they super bright and really knowledgeable and enthusiastic about their field, but they genuinely care about students and you're able to foster relationships with a lot of them. And uh, that's definitely something I really appreciate. Yeah, uh, just to add on to that, I mean, one of my favorite people here on campus is Dean Lacombe. She's a Dean in the Carroll School of Management and I actually didn't even take a class with her, but she ended up becoming a really great mentor for me. So uh, last year, one of the admissions counselors, uh, her name is Cindy, she sent me an email asking, hey, you know, do you want to find some mentors here on campus? I can connect with some professors. Uh, here are some uh, people I would recommend. I was like, yeah, you know, Dean Lacombe, she sounds great. Maybe I'd love to get to know her. Uh, so she connected me with Dean Lacombe. We had like a Zoom call like a week later and she just kept asking about my experiences about my time here at BC. Uh, then I ended up taking a class with her this semester. I dropped into her office hours because I had a question about the class in general. So for the first 10 minutes, she was just answering my questions about the class. But then for the next 20 minutes, she was just asking me about my time here at BC, about my experiences. Uh, she asked me the question that everyone's going to ask you in your junior year, which is like, where do you see yourself working? Where, where do you want to intern next next summer? And I was like, oh my God, I don't know just yet. Uh, but she was willing to connect. She was willing to ask me about my journey where I see myself. She connected me with a couple of people working in the sort of place that I could see myself working in. And she was really went above and beyond to make me feel welcome and also help me find the right resources for me to navigate my time here at BC. Awesome, thank you. I'm sure we could stay on this question forever because I know there's so many wonderful people to meet at BC, um, but I feel like this is a great time to switch a little bit now to specific resources on campus. And we have so many different resources available to BC students, which is really amazing. Um, but I'm wondering if there's any places, offices, departments, things like that, that you went for for advice, um, even maybe specifically tailored towards your experience as an Ahana student or professionally or extracurricularly? Uh, 
Um, I think uh, do you want to point out one resource uh, is the career center. I actually I was gonna have uh, like a photo shoot to get a professional headshot, but I don't have any professional clothes. But they actually give you uh, three free pieces of clothes for the whole academic year, and so you could go to their career closet and just like try it on, and you could take that for the whole year. So that was like really nice because like I I couldn't buy any of that stuff. Um, but that was just one resource that really helped me out. Also, Montserrat, uh, which is the, the office that helps students who have a lot of financial aid, and they help out in so many ways. Um, I I was I need to help with my, my textbooks, and so they help all the Montserrat students at the beginning of every semester to get uh, like two of your textbooks, I believe. Um, and they also have other other things. So they have so many extensive resources. Um, I definitely recommend going on the website and look, looking at what they have. That is very helpful, but also just in general, uh, one of the very powerful resources for me is actually your email. You can just reach out to anybody that if you need help, like your professor, uh, or maybe even somebody from one of these offices. Like especially last year when when with COVID, I had to be in quarantine, and, and it was just so much for me. But I reached out to my professor and let them know what was going on, and they were very understanding and, and able to give me an extension. So there's little things like that. If you ever need help. You can always reach out using use your email to anybody, and they'll definitely be able to listen to you and provide some solutions for you. A really great resource on campus, I would say, is um, the Theo Bowman um, Ahana and Intercultural Center. Um, they have advisors there for Ahana, Ahana Plus students, um, and they have amazing resources. They even have like a big conference room and just an area to hang out, um, and they put on events and programming. Um, all throughout the year. So it's a great place um, and really feels like home for Ahana Plus students on campus. Um, also something that really meant a lot to me was um, freshman year, I was an econ major and I was taking a calculus class. Safe to say I'm no longer an econ major <laughs> and I have not taken a math class after that. But um, it's a really like, it's a really tough time for freshmen, especially um, in some rigorous classes for their major. So the Thea Bowman Ahana and Intercultural Center actually like reached out and to the Ahana students in math classes. And I would get emails about the tutoring services that they were offering for Ahana Plus students enrolled in calculus. And that really meant a lot, even if I couldn't make it to a particular session, just the fact that they were going above and beyond to reach out and like knowing that students could be struggling in these subjects really meant a lot to me. Um, but yeah, they're a great resource. So I also know that a lot of these clubs and organizations and offices um, run a lot of different retreats and programs um, and they're offered to really all students or maybe tailored towards um, a particular demographic. But I'm wondering if any of you have gone on any retreats or programs offered by BC or any of these offices. Yeah, I went on 48 hours my freshman year. So 48 hours is a retreat that is specifically for first year students. And the, the point of it is to discuss the college transition. And you do that in small groups with um, a bunch of first year students. And then it's all facilitated and led by an upperclassman. So for me, it was a senior. And, you know, we still talk once in a while. She was awesome. Uh, had a, got a lot of great advice from her. And she also helped me make a lot of really good friends. And basically what they do is they take you to this uh, beautiful hotel in Cape Cod and you get a nice uh, break from school. Uh, you get a nice break from campus and you essentially get to talk about what's going right, what's going wrong, uh, sort of where you see your college experience going, uh, that sort of stuff. And uh, there's a lot to get out of it. And there are also a lot of great friendships to be made. Awesome. And I know there's a bunch of different retreats run by the BAIC, so the Thea Bowman Ahana Intercultural Center. Um, Montserrat Office also helps to fund a lot of these retreats in general. So if you have any like questions or want to look into those, you can definitely search those online or reach out to us. Um, I do have a bit of a broader question, just based off of everything we've talked about. I was wondering if any of you um, or if you have seen or maybe a friend has experienced any challenges on campus, especially identifying as an Ahana student or Yash as well as an international student, whether that be in um, finding that community or uh, getting involved or finding particular resources or anything. Yeah, I can get um, started. So I um, 
come from Miami, Florida, which is a very different atmosphere um, than Boston and DC in general. So it was a really um, big kind of culture shock for me just to get adjusted to that and just being around people from all different parts of the world, but also, um, you know, not to have as big of a um, Latinx community around me. So um, that was kind of a, a difficult transition for me just getting adjusted to it. But I think that um, obviously the resources that BC offers as well as like the ways that they form communities on campus so for example like retreats um, clubs organizations stuff like that really allowed me to connect with other people and kind of not forced because I don't like that word but kind of push me along nudge me a little bit to go out there and make these sort of friendships and talk with these people from all different parts of the country and the world so um, I would say that that really helped me in my transition and also um like I mentioned before, the BAIC, Theo Bowman Ahana and Intercultural Center um, puts on great events and they even have, um, you know, food that you can pick up. So they have these like grab and go um, food days. And some days they had um, they had food from all over the like different countries, um, especially, especially on Hispanic Heritage, Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, they had these grab and goes and that really made me happy because I feel like I couldn't get like that type of food around here so just things like that really made me feel at home um and allowed me to really facilitate more friendships from with people from all parts of the world awesome um thank you Gianna so as we start to wrap up, I'd actually love if each of you could offer any piece of advice um, as our viewers are looking at schools and going through the college search process. Like, what's something you wish you know, you wish you knew if you were in their shoes? Um, but now being here in your second, third, fourth year at BC, um, I would say it's really important because this is something that I didn't do, and uh, feel like it's definitely. The smart like a smart move especially now being on the other side of like watching students apply to college make sure that when you're you know researching schools and all that sort of stuff that you talk to students directly and you ask them about their experience uh make sure you're going to stuff like this where the information that you're getting is uh being delivered by students talking about their experiences because that's the best way to learn about the type of people that a certain school attracts uh the sort of experiences that you can sort of predict that you'll have there and whether or not it's the right fit for you Um, I would say definitely spend time on like actually researching the school, like look into the websites, different resources that they offer. Um, I think it's very important to also have a good understanding of what's available to you once you get to campus. So I know like one thing I did was always look up like, is there like a cultural center at the school? Is there some resource for first generation students, things like that? And even like special programs, some schools have like specific programs for like certain academics um things like that so definitely spend time on like doing the research not just like looking at it real quick but like actually reading it and um like Paul said like definitely try and reach out to students if you can or attend events like this where you can ask questions because that's really some of the most valuable feedback you could get about what the school really is because maybe one thing is just reading it on the website and another thing is actually hearing a student's experience so I find that very valuable and that'll be very helpful for you to do Yeah, I can go ahead. Um, I would say, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but researching is super important. Um, I would also say in addition to that and kind of goes hand in hand with researching is can you picture yourself at this um, college? So kind of like, you know, once you do your research for all the colleges that you're looking into, kind of doing a day in the life, like what would a day in the life in this college look like? So when you're reaching out to students to ask them for their input and their experience, like kind of see if this is someone that you picture being friends with, like is what they're talking to you about something that you would want to partake in, um, you know, not just hearing about retreats and seeing that they're available to you, but do I see myself going on a retreat like this? Is this who I am? Would I be into that? Um, and also just like, again like you don't have to have a set major when you come in for college but just thinking like do they have the field that I would be interested in pursuing um because some colleges don't have certain fields open to you so just kind of picturing yourself at the place and at the geographic location too is really important like are you a city type of person 
Um, do you not like that? Do you want a college campus? I would say that's all really important. Yeah, I guess just to echo Gianna's point, I think like what I now realize is that there, it's a it's really a two-way process, like the college application process. You're not just applying to a college, but they also are accepting you in some ways and they want to know if you're a fit for the college as well. So I think you have a lot more power than you might seem to have as well. Like when you when you choose to apply to a college, it's a very intentional decision because you're researching the college, you have to understand what kind of resources are there. But like Gian said, like do you picture yourself at that college as well? So when you apply to a college, you're also accepting them as much as they're accepting you as well. I think only now that I'm at BC did I realize that this is the place that I could best see myself and was the best place for me to be at to grow, not just academically, but also holistically as well. I think that's a part of like the college search process that's often not shed light on it's like it's a two-way process and you should really see yourself in that college and not just apply for the sake of applying absolutely i want to say a big thank you to all of our panelists and then a big thank you to all of our viewers here as well for being here um i do just want to actually share our contact information in case you have any questions follow-up um anything like that you have our names and our emails as well you also have the admissions email um, and the website, which is www.bc.edu/visit, and that's where you'll see our previous Ahana theme programmings, as well as other theme virtual programs that we actually have. Um, we actually have a bunch of different ones, and we have some upcoming ones as well, including one on the new engineering major, uh, one focused on international students, and one focusing on performing arts. So, if you're interested in any of those. Um, would highly recommend uh, hopping on or just looking on our website to see any of those as well. Um, and just to close us off again, thank you so much. Um, I hope this we were able to answer some of your questions and you're able to get a little bit more of an insight into BC and what life at BC is like. So thank you again.